Hello, uh, this video we're going to do some quick examples of using the right hand rule to find the direction of the force acting on a charge due to a magnetic force moving through a magnetic field. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you some of these. I very much encourage you to kind of pause it, try them on your own, and then see how you do. Um, all right, so here's the first one that I think we started with in class, but as a recap, we have a charge positive charge moving to the right through a magnetic field into the page. All right, so um, you essentially want to take your hand like so, point the index finger points in the direction of the velocity. So you're going to point your index finger to the right on your page, and the magnetic field, B field, your bad finger, you're going to point it into the page like so, which makes your thumb point upwards on the paper. The force is up on this charge as it moves. All right, so that's the right hand rule for this one. Example number two, give it a pause and give it a try. Negative charge moving to the right. All right, and the idea for this one is I got a negative charge moving to the right, so my finger still points to the right side of my page. The magnetic field is towards the top of the page, so my middle finger should point up on the page like so, and that means my thumb is pointing out of the page, which shows me that a positive charge would be pushed out of the page, but since it's a negative, I flip my thumb and it's going in. So into the page is the force on that one. Okay, here's another one. You can pause it, give it a shot. And I think you'll find for this one that you can't do it. You can't point uh, up with your uh, index finger and down with your middle finger and keep them 90 degrees apart, or more or less 90 degrees apart. You might see some where they're, you know, uh, at angles that aren't perfectly 90, and you can do those, but this is 180 degrees. And if we think about the equation, that it's QVB uh, sine of theta, the sine of 180 degrees is zero. So if you're going along the uh, B field or directly against the B field, in other words, at that angle, zero degrees or 180 degrees, there will be no force at all. Any other angle, there will be some force. 90 degrees will get the most force. Right, but no force here because you're not moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. Here's another one. Take a look at it. Give it a try. Hey, the answer for this one is you don't use the right hand rule at all because we have an E field, an electric field. So be very careful. Um, one of the trickiest things is making a distinction between magnetic fields and electric fields. They are totally different things, um, definitely related to each other, but very different. Because remember the rule for an electric field is it just shows me which way a positive charge would be pushed. That's how we define the, the direction of an electric field back in the day. So I don't need to use any kind of crazy right hand rules. If I got a positive charge in an electric field going up, that literally means it will push any positive charge in this location will be pushed in the direction of the field and like a negative would be pushed down all right so the electric field you know we could imagine it could be any number of things but we could imagine a big positive charge down here maybe a positively charged plate or something giving us a nice consistent field um, and so the the uh, positive charge would be repelled from it if you like um, you know, in all these examples, there's no repelling, really. We, we wouldn't call it repelling. There's no other charge making this happen. There's a magnetic field. All right, so totally different things. Try and really be careful on how you're thinking about magnetic force versus electric force. Uh, here's one more. Positive charge at rest next to a magnetic field. What do you think? Well... If you're doing this, you know, there's nowhere to point your index finger. Um, there's no V. And if we think about the equation again, if V is zero, there is no force. So again, in a magnetic field, the charge will only experience a force if it's moving. Again, different than electric field. If this was an electric field, it would totally get pushed or pulled by the field, but it only responds to a magnetic field if there's motion. All right, so no force here as well. Okay, here's another one with some math, so you can give this a shot. Um, we'll, do, we'll do them one by one, and I'll show you the solution here. But this is a classic kind of thing. I think we saw a little bit when we looked at this that there is some circular motion that happens. Um, 
so we're going to talk about why. But first thing is another right-hand rule. So I have an electron, so I know it's a negative charge, enters a region with a magnetic field. I got a bunch of dot vectors here. There's the size of the field, that's micro tesla, and there's its speed. So first, state the direction of the magnetic force. All right, right-hand rule. Go ahead and pause and try it out. So for this one, let's see, you got an electron moving to the right. The B field, the dots, remember, represent the, the field is coming out of the page. The dot is uh, an arrow pointing directly towards you. That's the pointy tip of the arrow. Uh, okay, so B field is out of the page. I got to put my index finger to the right and the B field out of the page like so. So my thumb is pointing down, but uh, it's a negative charge. So whoosh, I'm going to flip it. So a positive charge would be pushed downwards towards the bottom of the page. Since it's an electron, it's going to get pushed upwards by the field. So the electron will come in and generally go like this. It's going to curve upwards. The force initially will be directly up, so upwards up positive y something like that for a for b outline why the electron will move with uniform circular motion think about this one too um think about what the rules are the conditions for circular motion so you can go ahead and pause again try and think that over why how do we define circular motion okay so the key for circular motion is that you have some kind of centripetal force and remember, one of the important defining features of a centripetal force is that it acts perpendicular to the motion, to the velocity of the object. Right? Acceleration is always towards the center of the circular path. The net force, the centripetal force, is always towards the center of the circular path. So by definition, it's going to be tangent to the, or sorry, uh, perpendicular to the velocity, which is tangent. So, um, because we have a force that is, by its nature, perpendicular to V, the right-hand rule says your force will always be, your magnetic force will always be perpendicular to the velocity of the thing moving. The magnetic force will always cause uniform circular motion, which is very exciting because we can do circular motion problems now. All right, so it's because the force is perpendicular to the velocity would be the key part of our answer to B. And so for C, we can do some math now, because now if I want to determine the radius, I know there's circular motion, I know I'm going to get into some circular motion equations. So see how you do. Review your circular motion ideas, equations, topic six, perhaps. We're essentially going to combine topics five and six in the data booklet. So see what you can come up with here. Give it a pause, and then uh, we'll do the solution. Okay. So... The equation for the magnitude of the magnetic force is this QVB sine of theta, and that force is the centripetal force. Remember, any forces causing it to move in a circle, we add and subtract. It's a net force kind of thing. Well, here the only force making it move in a circle is the magnetic force. So uh, the magnetic force is the centripetal force, and remember, we can set that equal to mv squared over r. So centripetal force, mv squared over r, that's my ma in a circle, right? Acceleration for centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. So I set these equal. The magnetic force is the centripetal force, and now we crunch some numbers and solve for r, essentially, is what we're doing. Um, some algebra we can do, the v, I got a v here and a v squared over there, so we can simplify things a little bit. And like you'll see in a lot of these problems, not every time, but a lot of the time, the angle between V and B, remember, is what theta is. V is to the right, B is out of the screen, and that's a 90 degree angle. And so the sine of 90 is one, so we can kind of drop this term, right? We're plugging a one in there. So my equation simplifies to this, and if we solve for R, we see it's MV over QB. And plug and chug. All right, be careful with the units. Mass and charge of an electron, of course, come from the front of your data booklet. Uh, it is an electron, so we're gonna use those numbers. We definitely wanna use kilograms and meters per second and base units, regular Tesla, not micro Tesla. So we're gonna put the 10 to the minus six there for micro Tesla. And I think we were given the speed. And there's the radius, 30 centimeters. So you can see the radius of this path depends on a couple things, the mass of the charge, the charge of the charge. And so again, when we're doing, um, you know, in a particle accelerator, when we're looking at these, these trails that the particles leave, 
you can figure out based on the path that this particle took and the radius of its path how big it was and or its charge or even the ratio of the two depending on what you know but it's a really useful little um little tool measuring the paths of these particles to figure out what they were so there you go that's a uh, some magnetic force practice for you uh keep it up there's some more practice on uh schoology that you can try so have fun